This is the MRI from August just prior to the surgery we're talking about going. Okay. And we are going from down here, up, okay? Okay. And this is the front, this is the back, and it's the opposite. So this is the left side and this is the right side. Got it. Your, your tumor is on the uh, right um, frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll show it to you once we, we, we get up there. So I'm go going up, okay? Okay. So everything here looks um, clear. And then we see this area here. The white area, yes. this is the tumor. So after we give you the dye, so it lights up. Okay. So that's how it looked like with all the white uh, abnormality here. This is all the tumor that Dr. Makan um, resected in September. Right. And then this is January scan. Um, and you can see like, there's still a little bit of white areas. Mm -hmm. um, but everything looked okay. I mean, there is nothing really that's uh, very concerning. I mean, if anything look, look better. Um, but then today here, you see this white. Oh yeah, that's huge. Oh my gosh. I, I was also surprised. That's massive, wow, okay. And it's very short period of time, you know? Like. Mm -hmm. Just a couple um, months. Just a couple months, uh, yeah, and you were still receiving the treatment. It's not like that we even stopped the treatment yet. Right. Um, and there's some some abnormality here, um, and there's more extension in the back here. Okay. Um, so, so, so is it like predominantly the area that Dr. McCon resected mm -hmm. is higher up? Oh, okay. Although you always had something here, um, but this is this is way more um, than, than than even uh, yeah before the surgery. Then before the surgery, September. So okay, um, I did um, email Dr. McCon okay um, to see if surgery um, is an option. Mm -hmm. Potentially, could be an option. However. Uh, we're not going to be able to remove uh, all of this back here. Okay. Um, and maybe some some of this um, will be left behind. Okay. Uh, we can we can speak with Dr. Makan and see his th thoughts as well. Okay. Um, about another surgery, and then your radiation therapy was a while ago in, in 2017. Right. So a second course of radiation therapy could also be a possibility. Okay. And then the third possibility is a clinical trial. Okay. Um, and I was just screening you for any possible clinical trials. So one trial uh, we can do because you already received the drug before, the Optiva, when you had the diagnosis and yes. you had the side effect from it. And a one trial you're not eligible for because um, of the IDH mutation in the, in the tumor. It's a good right. marker, uh, but at the same time, um, trials can be very strict about, about yeah, very specific patients. about yes yeah. about the non patients with the IDH mutation because they will do better than, than average okay um, sometimes in the setting of progression they they, they um, uh, don't focus on that okay uh, because because they think that it might not matter but this specific trial is still focusing on it so we, we just confirmed however uh, the drug that's used for the trial it's called uh, rigorafenib. Okay. We can potentially get it um, from uh, the company without the clinical trial. So we right. can work on getting it for, for you. Okay. That might be an option to do the radiation therapy and then do the the, the rigorafenib, the, the medication um, right. uh, name. Okay. I reached out to um, a colleague of mine at Memorial um, Sloan Kettering. Mm -hmm. um, because of the IDH mutation, um, they um, they developed certain companies developed specific drugs to target this mutation. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly used in in patients with lower grade tumors, not glioblastoma. Okay. But they have an early drug development trial using this specific um, a drug that targets the IDH mutation. So 